Welcome to our Asian Coaching Supervisor Network. We meet always the last Wednesday of the month at what will be in the morning in Asia, the evening the day before in the United States. And uh, today we have a special guest. We have Dr. Paras. Um, and Paras, I will let you, for you to share whatever you want to share about you, but I want to share with people what I know about you. I, I met Paras at a conference where he was getting an award for his contribution to the coaching profession as a youth, as a young professional. And that's talk about his, how Para for many years as a coach has he been contributing to the global development of coaching. So I want to recognize you Para for that. And I know now you get another recognition from EMCC, also a similar recognition if I am not wrong. And uh, also, Paras had the opportunity to uh, work with him. He participated in my coaching supervision training, where he became a coach supervisor last year. We have some people from, from his class here, too. And, uh, it's, and he and I, I invited Paras to, to teach in the coaching supervision program, the section on the TA, transactional analysis. And he did such a great job that I told him, OK, you need to come and let everybody know more about transactional analysis and about the work that you do. So thank you, Paras, for accepting the invitation to be here today. And I don't know what else would we like people to know about you. So probably I would be looking forward if you have any questions for me to know more now or maybe towards the end of the workshop, end of the session, whatever it works well for me. Yeah, so if you want to start presenting, if there is anything else you want to say about you, if not, you can start with the presentation and at the end we can open for questions. So we want to be sure that we have 10 minutes. We have only one hour, so we want to be sure that the presentation is around 45 minutes. Yeah. So maybe, uh, Damien, would you be letting me know when to start so that okay. I'm also aware in case if I get uh, engrossed with the group and the group questions? Okay, so we'll let you know when you have like 10 minutes or 15 minutes for questions so people can start doing that. Sure. So, <clears throat> namaste to everybody. I'm Paras, and I would be presenting today uh, on the chapter of transaction analysis. And I learned transaction analysis eight years ago, and I rigorously studied in the last five and a half years. And I'm going for my CTA that is certified in transaction analysis in counseling and coaching. So that's my journey, and I'm very passionate about the study. I felt it's a foundational learning for me to work with people. And it added more value in the space of supervision. So I wish to present to you with a short video first, maybe a short video of six to seven minutes, which talks about transaction analysis in general, and then take you through the theory of transaction analysis and connect it to supervision. There are multiple topics on transaction analysis. I do not know how many we can cover today, but maybe I'm, I believe that maybe one or two concepts can be good for all of us to explore it. Uh, if you're comfortable with any exercise or participation, if you want to ask me any questions, feel free to ask me anytime because that's the more questions you ask, the more answers we can explore, not just with me, but from different people, different cultures, different learning styles. And that could be very fruitful for TA learning. TA is purely based on uh, how we operate, from, uh, operate our behaviors from what ego states. So let's watch a quick video and take it from there. But be sure when you share the screen, they are in the window two places where you can mark so the sound can come up okay. Are you familiar with that? Yes. yes. Okay. What are ego states in transactional analysis? Eric Byrne demystified personalities for us in 1958 with his transactional analysis model. Find out more about TA with Dr. Peraza's TA for non-TA series. This is the first of the series. Transactional analysis shows us how people are structured psychologically. Ever wondered how and why people function the way they do? Ever wondered what makes you behave the way you do? What is it that makes you who you truly are? 
Transactional analysis takes a closer look at personalities and the way people express themselves through their behavior styles. Indeed, TA is now the most powerful tool used for many training and communication development purposes. Isn't it a wonder how TA improves communication to such a great extent? We'll decode this for you. In this video, we'll take a look at the ego states of TA. Ever observed the way you've behaved and reacted in a single day? Let's take any day, for example. Maybe someone stressed you out, perhaps a colleague at work, and you reacted with anger. Maybe you've said a couple of unnecessary things. You may have even changed your mind later and let things go. You shook hands with a smile to work towards a common professional goal. Yet, you found yourself sulking a bit for the whole weekend, feeling bad over the misunderstandings. Have you ever felt the way you behave, think, and respond may resonate with your parents or parental figures? Or maybe a younger version of you? Or do you feel you could have handled the situation differently by using the available resources around you? Why do you behave the way you do? The ego state model of TA helps you understand exactly what's happening to you. It brings you closer to knowing personalities and decoding the best communication methods. Definition of ego states. Eric Byrne defined an ego state as a consistent pattern of feeling and experience directly related to a corresponding consistent pattern of behavior. Eric Byrne describes a person to display three ego states. Communication happens via one or all of these three states. These states consist of our behaviors, thoughts, and feelings, values, beliefs, culture, and life rules. The TA practice defines three states in which we operate, parent ego state, adult ego state, child ego state. This PAC model aptly displays the shifts of our ego states. In our earlier example, we noticed you shouted at the colleague. Maybe you reprimanded them using a parent ego state, one where you disapproved their style of working. Your sulking is a reflection of the child ego state and the one where you decided to let things go consciously to resume work in a healthy spirit is your adult ego state. With a lack of adult awareness, you may not have been conscious of the shifting ego states. That's what ego states are. Byrne says that each ego state is defined by a combination of feelings and experiences which consistently occur together. Here's the definition, parent ego state. The behaviors in this ego state represent behaviors, thoughts, and feelings that are copied from the parents or parent figures. Adult ego state. These are behaviors, thoughts, and feelings which are direct responses to the here and now. Child ego state. These are behaviors, thoughts, and feelings replayed from childhood. Understanding the ego state model allows you to check your behaviors, feelings, and experiences while understanding your connection with others. Sounds complex? Let's make it easy for you. The parent ego state is one where you're influenced by the voices inside your head, and these voices belong to your parents, grandparents, or teachers. Sometimes you speak like a parent by saying, you shouldn't do this, or this is not appropriate. It's all about the don'ts, mustn'ts, always remember, and never forget. If you feel you've replayed a certain behavior and felt familiar feelings as you did when you were a child, you might be displaying the child ego state. You might have felt butterflies in your tummy at a public speaking event, just as you did when you were asked to address a class in school. Boy, wasn't that event scary? These thoughts are replayed even now. But if you feel you've dealt with a situation in a grown-up way using your thoughts and feelings to display behavior in tandem with the present moment to determine your course of action, then you're in the adult ego state. What's interesting is that we need all our three states for a balanced life. We need adult ego state to enable us for better decision-making skills. We need the parent ego state to live peacefully in the society by conforming to basic rules. 
and we need the child ego state to keep that spark of creativity and spontaneity alive. That's what makes you as a person. Understanding the ego states gives you the power to understand and be understood in every situation. You give yourself the choice to respond better to situations while comprehending information easily. You not only turn into an effective communicator, but you also build empowering connections for life. Love of the concept? Subscribe to our channel for the next chapter in the TA for non-TA video series based on strokes. Did you know you can learn TA to use its concepts and be coached to be aware for life? After all, it's all about the power of your mind. Meet Dr. Perales, an award-winning life All right, so we just, I just introduced you the video to understand about the TA concept. So let's go a little bit in depth to understand uh, what exactly it is. And also if you have any questions, because visuals are very powerful. So I just thought of introducing you to the visual first and then uh, it'll take you through a little presentation and see uh, if you can ask me any questions. You're most welcome to put your questions on chat or ask me directly. So what I would like to not talk about the whole chapters, but maybe transaction analysis with ego states and uh, structural analysis is what I like to cover today. And if we get time, we can also look at functional analysis. So a quick question about contracting to all of you. <clears throat> when I talk about permission, protection, and potency, in this session, as you're watching, you would be introduced to TA concepts. It may also do a lot of churning in yourself. Uh, the bigger question is, do I need to protect you or how are you going to protect yourself? And how are you going to give yourself the permission to be you in the session? So think about it. When you're going through this presentation, there are times you may feel uncomfortable. How are you going to protect yourself and how much leeway or permission you want to go to deep dive into your own self when you are going through the session? The uh, Eric transaction analysis was, uh, Eric Bin was a founder of transaction analysis theory and it was later on developed by many other people in the world of TA. What intrigued me to bring this topic because I really love the philosophy of TA. It talks about people are okay. So when I, when, I hear, when I heard this particular word, that people are okay, and one of the basic philosophy is similar to Carl Rogerian philosophy of client-centered counseling to coaching as people are intelligent, resourceful from the ICF standards and EMCC standards. So, so it really resonated with me to bring this concept and use it in our supervision or in, while working with clients. And second thing is everybody has the capacity to think, people decide their own destiny and these decisions can be changed. So, so the second feeling that I, I got from you is that people have a choice and people can make that choice if, and people can change their certain choices if they don't like at any point of time. And the basic assumption of the principle of TA is contractual methods and open communication. So these are the two things we work very strongly when we're working with supervision or class or even coaching. Uh, if you're looking at some to know a little bit of uh, the specialization, there are, there are three schools in TA and the fourth one is in a co-creative space. The first is cathexis, which talks a lot about the word energy and primarily used in a field of psychotherapy. While classical is what I would be introducing you to, which is very easy to learn and use that model in different aspects of your life. And redecision uh, is another model where you can go back to your personal history and change if it's required. And there are four specializations. One is in education. Second is in organization development, which we call as OD. Third is counseling and fourth is psychotherapy. And when I went through counseling, I felt a lot of concepts in coaching and counseling blend together. So, so coming to the ego states, we have three ego states. Eric Byrne defines it as parent ego state. So parent ego state primarily talks a lot about the beliefs, the values, the emotions, the expressions, uh, the behaviors, the decisions, 
the value system, the culture, all that we watch, see, observe, learn, unlearn, swallow, all of that is a part of our parent ego state. So maybe when I was a child, I learned a lot about the way I made meanings to certain things based on how my experience with the parent ego states were there. So primarily it talks about father and mother, but further it goes to multiple people like teachers and gurus and all of that. And further in your organization, you can go to your bosses or your, your management people, or Apex team. So these all people have a lot of, uh, a lot of influence on our way we communicate, we speak, or we work with each other. And uh, in my supervision experience, I felt uh, while working with code supervisors or code supervisees was to the statements like, I tried my best, but I should have done it differently. And a lot of these critical, a lot of these words, I could observe it. And I, when I used to bring it to their attention, I used to learn about how there was a self-conflict between what I want to do versus what I should do. And in that whole confusion, something gets created and people or the coaches is to work with clients and then they to have the reflection, okay, I could have done differently just by making them aware of what is the critical voice telling them. So parent ego state talks about behaviors, thoughts, and feelings that are copied from parent or parental figures. Between zero to eight years, it's considered that it's like an empty cup you, because your awareness level is just in the growing state. So you tend to absorb everything around your environment, not from the way it's taught only, but it's also from the way you have made meanings to it. So whatever filters that we have in our lives are also called as our interpretation of the environment. While the adult ego state uh, is called as the, the way we process things in the year and now. Rather than thinking of what I should do, if I assess the situation, what can I do now? And there's a huge difference and it is a lot of journey to look at the adult ego state. Like with the coronavirus coming in, and there was a lot of panic, even with my family, initially when I went through it. And when I started really assessing myself, what's happening to me, I'm just getting so, so angry. And I, anxiety is sitting at home and just classes are getting canceled or postponed or rescheduled or virtual. And I managed to assess myself, what exactly is going on with me? And the moment I was able to do that, I was able to bring my, present, my presence in the year and now. And... And everything just got smaller. The grandiosity that I was creating about the whole issue became much smaller for me to work with it. And the child ego state, the child ego state is all our childhood strategies. For example, I would love to share about myself. Like if I wanted something and I would not get, so I would act in a way that would create some kind of uh, shame in the environment and my parents used to quickly give it to me. And when I grew up and I realized that similar pattern I was carrying in a little um, sophisticated version of touch me not, that means I would not talk to the person at all or just maintain distance and just be very different. And when I went through my own self-understanding and self-reflection, it really helped me to understand the way I'm communicating with the environment is not helping me to grow. It's not helping me to move further. It's just uh, depleting and it's not giving me the confidence to be myself. And that's where I started recalling things and bringing my awareness in the adult ego state of what do I want now? So, um, some, uh, okay, and this theory is also being compared with uh, Sigmund Freud's theory of it ego superego. I'm sure you would have heard it or if not, superego talks about the uh, superego talks about more the the societal norms or what we're supposed to do and what we're not supposed to do, while the it talks about the instinctive behavior. If I want something, I need to go for it. And the ego talks about um, how do I balance myself 
looking at the um, so social space and as well as my needs to be met. So for example, if I want to break something anywhere, uh, my aide would say, just respond to it. You cannot just keep quiet. You, you can just fight flight. While my super ego would say that, okay, this is not the time to do this. You should be a good boy. And the aide would look at, okay, looking at this data point, doesn't look like breaking things would help or getting angry would help. Maybe it's a safe time to see how we can have a win-win solution. However, the there's a huge difference between the Sigmund Freudian's theory of edigo superego and the transaction analysis. Edigo superego is more intrapsyche; it cannot be visible. It's 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 happening inside, so you really do not know what's going on. But in ego states, you can actually observe not only the words, the tone of voice, the body language, and uh, and also the client energy as a whole or the coach supervises energy as a whole, and even your own energy as a whole, what's happening to you. Also, this theory can, is very good to use when, let's say, example, you are challenged to, for an uncomfortable conversation. What's really happening to you? You can really assess yourself at your body sensation. Okay, I'm feeling, I want to give it up, I want to run away. So check what ego state is that. Maybe it's I'm getting hooked by my child because a child doesn't want to confront. Or maybe I become very angry and shout and be more punitive and try to talk to the other person that, okay, you're wrong and you made this mistake and show my justification. Maybe I'm bringing my parent ego state in the conversation by making the other person to get their child ego state hooked. But how about uh, being aware about what is it going on with me? How am I experiencing? How am I processing the data points? What's happening to me internally? The moment I start doing this assessment with myself, time and again, whenever I feel I'm, I'm in an uncomfortable space, the adult ego state really brings out a lot of awareness to respond to the reality. So before I could take you through the supervision, how this model, you could use it in supervision, I'm gonna take a pause and going to ask you if you have any questions for me. I would be happy to answer them. So people can just raise their hand or write the question in the chat room, whatever you prefer. Yeah, if you like to talk directly, you can just talk to me by saying, okay, this is a question or a query. Yes, Debbie. Debbie, yes. Yes. Debbie, yeah. yes. Uh, I, I just want to ex explore briefly so that I understand the movement in the, the three areas, the three ego states. Um, I don't know that I heard this, but is, is there an understanding that the, the adult ego state is the most preferred, or are you talking about just acknowledging and knowing the three states in which you function? Or is there a desire to try to stay in the parent, I mean, in the adult mode? Yeah, so a very interesting question, Debbie. Uh, maybe at this moment in the structural analysis, I just want to bring out that how your adult can bring you potency to uh, be in the year and now and help you to assess the situation. Once I take you through functional analysis, which is the way we communicate, like the way you ask me a question and I answer to you, so what ego states will we both operating from? That would come in uh, where I would say that you're bringing your adult awareness and using your parent ego state. You're using your adult awareness and using and bringing your child ego state. So that would be a little later in the next uh, slide. But to answer in short, how can you bring your adult awareness in the session? How can you bring your adult awareness uh, while communicating? Uh, P and C can be a rubber band taking us to the past. We, it can be like a trigger. We just go back to past and the critical voice starts talking and then we tend to justify it. So we are not at all in the room with the discussion with the other person, but we just tend to go back. But adult brings you in the present and supports you to look at resources for how you could handle it at this point of time. Like I go, I want to go for bungee jumping and I will have an excitement like a child. I want to do and explore it. 
when I go there and I say, okay, this is so crazy, like what I felt and what is it now? And I have paid the money and I really want to experience, but there's a sense of fear the child experiences within me. So how I can bring my adult awareness to talk to myself that I'm safe and it's all happening because there are thousands of people have gone for the bungee jumping in uh, New Zealand. So can I bring my adult awareness in that crisis situation or stress situation or difficult situation or challenging situation to uh, assess myself, what is my response going to be? Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, hi, Lynn. Hi, Paris. I'm curious about when all three show up and I'm shifting between all three and I'm having difficulty figuring out which voice is speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Is there any guidance you can give around that? Yes. So uh, just going to repeat the question for me to understand that throughout the day, I keep operating from different ego states, which is going to be there because I'm a combination of the P and C and the A is evolving over a period of time. And that's where we say your awareness keeps growing the moment you're reflecting. Mm -hmm. And there are times when there are certain dark blind spots of my life or in the Johari window, if you say, I'm okay, I'm okay to share, I'm not okay to share or the, the third quadrant where I don't want to share more and that particular spot gets triggered. Maybe you gave me your feedback, Paras, that this could have done in a different way. And if that would have triggered me, maybe I was impacted by the group shaming or could be a group or uh, maybe bullied in the child. Okay, and that could have triggered me, then I would be not taking the feedback from the space that you brought in. I may go have rubber band to something triggered memory. And I could then start defending on that. So, so the best version is to be more in the more reflective space is to not answer. Okay, but maybe pause. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, just to check with yourself, is it how comforting is it for you to respond? Mm -hmm. Because the moment you get into either a parent or child, it can also get very dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then after some days or some time, uh, you know, in one of the other uh, chapters, people used to say that count one to 10 and then answer in many anger management strategies people talk about. But what happens if you see technically when I count one to 10, I'm actually able to segregate my parent data and the child data. And I'm more comfortable after that 10 to pause and choose to respond. Mm -hmm. Was that your question? Just curious to check. Yeah, so it sounds like it's like slowing it down and just sort of checking the different perspectives that are showing up. I'm just thinking about clients right now that are feeling so overwhelmed and um, there's the, I should be doing this. And then there's the fear part that comes up and it's all kind of here in the, you know, happening right in the here and now and how to sort that out and how to help people slow it down in yes. that adult so, place. I saw a lot of uh, information on the TV saying that parents do not panic because your kids are watching you. Mm -hmm. So maybe I am looking now at a deeper sense that all this panic is coming from a learned behavior, how to respond to reality. Okay, so if I'm panicking, like yesterday, uh, and, uh, our, prime, my prime, our country's prime, prime minister talked about there's going to be a 21 day lockdown, and I saw a rush on the road as if like people are feeling that from tomorrow everything is like shut. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, maybe I'm 35, 55, 45, 65, for example, and I'm panicking. So maybe that's a learned behavior, not mm -hmm. assessed in the year and now, but perceived to be the best way to work. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of people who are still, we call them as further in our TA language, we call it as script. We love to live in our script, in a framework. And that's how we tend to see that's the best way to deal with reality. And with the help of adult awareness, you can go as much deep like a scuba diving, 
how much deep you want to go, how much ready are you? Mm -hmm. And uh, the more ready are you, the more deeper sense you make, get a meaning to it and you have a better working with people. Like in supervision, when um, coaches come in and talk about, or when I go for my supervision, and uh, I use TA concepts for supervision because they're very powerful for me, apart from the 7i model and other models as well. I, I endorse all of them, but TA helps me a lot more to know about me very easily. So one of the times I told my supervisor that uh, my, my client doesn't understand, uh, I feel he's going the wrong way. Okay, I mean, uh, and when you learn about coaching is the client's decision. People have a choice. People want to know what they want to do. So my supervisor happened to ask me that, Paris, what is right and wrong and where is it coming from? What ego state are you witnessing within you right now? And I realized the loyalty to certain beliefs of there's a right and wrong behavior. And, and how it happened, it's such an intra psyche process, like a transference where client is talking about right, uh, client is talking about their story and what they want to go. And it got triggered to me from a space of the client is wrong because there's something right in my head. And notice the kind of relationship that I'm going through is not adult to adult, it's more parent to child. And the kind of parent to child relation going on, the client is not benefiting. Mm -hmm. And then the client tends to then ended up talking about that, okay, it's not going really well. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm feeling like little stuff. And then I felt more that, okay, I'm a parent. I need to really take care of this child. I started doing more and more nurturing or being critical. So that's something which in supervision we can spot on. Like what mm -hmm. is the ego state that we are operating from? So um, a little bit of psychoeducation or uh, concepts of TA and then assessing and uh, looking at the coach, a uh, coach supervisor that what is the ego state that you're operating because you can actually learn a lot of your unconscious behavioral patterns. And I was every time, maybe just one or two questions can really open up uh, the whole thing what's going in the process between you and your relation with your clients and also when I'm coming to my supervisor, what ego state am I in? It's also ready, I'm, I'm assessing it because times when I go to my supervisor and if I'm, I'm being a child, demonstrating the child ego states, I'm hooking the supervisor to be a parent. It's very easy for, and it's very, very powerful. Supervisors may feel wow about it. Like, okay, I'm, I'm like, this guy is listening to me and doing everything what I'm looking at, but that's not helping me as a supervisee to grow. But what I want to say, compliment to what you're saying, that is sometimes for supervisors in training, this is a very common place to go to be like a parent, so to save or help or tell somebody what to do. For many coaches too, you know, many coaches mm -hmm. también go to that place of parents of their yeah. clients, try to protect them and uh, and save them. And I do believe that, that that awareness that you're talking is what makes a difference. It's, if we are not aware, we cannot distinguish it, we cannot do anything. But if we can distinguish, we distinguish where we are operating from in all of the different roles, as a coach, as a supervisor, then we can bring some awareness of the dynamic of the relationships that we are having. Absolutely. So, so, so we have 10, min 10, 15 minutes to wrap up. So I wonder how do you want to do the second Thank half? You. Thank you for bringing that to my awareness, just to maybe I can stick to the PAC model and also want to bring some more insights if people are okay to process this. Uh, whenever you ask a question to people, like, how are you feeling now? Okay, all the feelings are at the child ego state. Whatever feelings that you feel in your body sensation is in your child ego state. Anything which is about values, moral principles, good or bad, right or wrong, all of that is in the parent ego state. So a person who comes to you in a code supervision is not coming alone, is carrying the whole system with it. It's carrying the beliefs, values, culture, um, the lifestyles, the religion, the, uh, the car country, the eating style, everything is there with, with that, the code supervising. 
while the child who comes in is come, coming up with a lot of tantrums, could be escapism, could be one of the tantrums, or not answering your question, but going deviating a lot of times. We call it as redefining the transaction. I ask you a question, you don't answer that. You answer something else in a supervision. And I bring it to the supervisor that, okay, I asked you twice this question, I'm wondering, we just went to another place. I'm just curious to check what's happening here. How are you feeling with this question? You're actually going back to the child ego state and checking with the child what exactly is going on with you and how you can bring that in the adult awareness. The beauty of uh, this uh, supervision or coaching is that you can always bring the client by asking questions to in the year and now. So all the belief values, concepts of life comes from the parent, all the feelings, how I'm feeling, what did I make meaning to those feelings are coming in the child. So if you go back to the book of ga um, uh, Inner Game of Tennis, there's a doer and there's a teller. So the teller I look at as a parent, the doer I look at as a child. So the, the doer is the one who has to be obedient, has to do it, and that's internal conflict, the critical voice in a TA language, the internal conflict from the doer-teller concept, and how you can bring the adult awareness by being in the year and now and assessing the situation. So code supervisors have a bigger responsibility, not just with they're working with uh, the supervisees, but they're actually working with the client's, uh, uh, what we say, the culture, the client system. At the same time, they are also looking at uh, the coach system. At the same time, they're also looking at their own system. So uh, very important to assess on uh, what ego state are you operating uh, during the supervision process and what ego state are you operating uh, a small reflection after the session it can be a good way for you to look at your own self yeah yes thank you okay so one of them uh, dr michael asked shared that there is a connection between adult ego state and competency five and six of the emcc supervision and competence, competence framework, absolutely. And also in the ICF, creating awareness, coaching presence, also talks about uh, adult awareness. So it's all about how you're bringing the adult awareness in the year and now and moving forward in the conversation. Uh, Sim talked about how are you feeling? Where is then the adult feeling? Okay, so maybe today we may not have the time to move to functional analysis. We could always meet back again on that. But you can go through the YouTube channel and find out the YouTube I've, uh, on my channel of Paras. You can find a video on functional analysis before if I can meet you or maybe a video could support you. So when I say how am I feeling is going to the child. How am I expressing the feeling will go to the adult. Like I'm in, in a setup right now here and I feel angry too and I feel so upset. I just cannot you know, close this particular uh, laptop and move away because that is not my adult response. That's maybe a, a very child rebellion response. So what I'm feeling is genuine. I need to just understand where is this feeling I'm coming from? Is it right now from the situation or I'm triggered like a rubber band? So a quick homework or maybe a home task or something, if you like to explore and I would love to give you that. Uh, think back over the past 24 hours of your life, where the moments during that time when you acted, thought and felt just as you did when you were a child, maybe in the past 24 hours or maybe the whole week you can take it up. Just to assess and understand what is your child ego state comprised of. Uh, were there other times when you found yourself behaving, thinking, and feeling in the ways you copied long ago from your parents or from other people who are parental figures for you? Sometimes we say the leaders are influential. Maybe actually the leader is mere uh, reflection of somebody whom I was very influenced from my early childhood. And also were there any, were there still other occasions when your behavior, thoughts and feelings was simply a direct year and now response to what was happening around you at that moment? On these occasions, you responded as a grown up now, 
rather than dipping back into your childhood. So I will send you the slides, okay, to Damien and probably he can share it with everybody. And if you like to do this homework uh, or home task where nobody can check, but you can just do a reflection work, it can be great. So before I could close my section, uh, I would also like to invite you in the month of May first week, I'm carrying a series which is called the Brand Ambassador of Mental Health Awareness, which would comprise of 12 videos on TA. And it will be all available free. So I'll talk to Damien and probably Damien would be the right person to, to share it with you. Uh, so there's a link, you go to, to that link, you watch the video, you answer the question, quiz competition, like 10 questions. If and 60% is passing and you have 12 videos in total. You claim for that, you get a certificate and it's a contribution to society. So I would like, if you all like to participate and also like to share that with others. If TA interest, uh, you know, TA really helped you to explore because I just shared a glimpse of it. It would be a good idea for you to have an access to all the 12 videos and learn and upgrade and see how it helps you to grow in your supervision process. This is very generous of you, Paras, to make this available to people. And I yeah. can think how many people, maybe they're working by themselves, maybe they can also get together and talk about what they are learning or maybe contacting you, they have questions. So thank you for, for that offer. And uh, I just posted my email. I think most of you are here today because you received an invitation from me from the mailing of the Asian Coaching Supervisors Network. But if you are not part of the network and you would like to get uh, the invitations, please send me an email, copy and paste my email, and you can send me a request for the slides for today, for the video, for the copy of this video, and also to include you in the, in the invitation for next month. So, but before we close, I don't know if there is any last question for Paras. We have five minutes. Is there any last questions? I'll be happy. And I've shared with you my main website and also the Thaumitram that's called self coaching, a group coaching concept that we introduced. So that from that website, you will get details from Damien uh, through an email. And probably if that excites you, you can share with as many people. My goal is to have 1 million people in the next five years uh, for people to raise their mental health awareness. So do contribute if you can from the best and help me and support me and help yourself and support everybody across the globe. What I want to say, Paras, is for the people who are here today who are not supervisors and not familiar with supervision. In supervision, we spend time exploring the relationships. Like we do that in coaching, but in supervision in particular, we spend time talking about the relationship between the coach and the client and the supervisor and the coach. And transactional analysis give us good tools to do that because help us to see the dynamic of the relationships how it's easy to go in these different states. So to the extent that we can be aware, we can choose to be in an adult state versus being in a parent state, particularly the supervisor with their uh, supervisees, or bringing these distinctions also for coaches, working with their clients when they are uh, taking these roles, which is pretty common. So I don't know if anybody have any last question or comment or observation. We will, before we <coughs> up, I want to make a couple of announcements. But before doing that, I wonder if anybody would like to ask a question or share a comment or anything uh, that you want to say before we finish. Yeah, Paras, um, I thought a question somewhere in my graduate days. I remember reading about TA that it was really uh, came out of an effort to translate psychoanalytic thinking into more practical out of uh, the Korean War or something out of sort of military psych uh, psychiatry dealing with, you know, sort of those sorts of issues. And I've been searching for where I got that from. And it's just sort of a, like a pebble in my shoe. <laughs> Can you clarify that? Because if it, if that was true, then, then the question of, when you took psychoanalytic thinking into TA language to make it more understandable to let's say soldiers going through battlefield stress and all, what was left off, what was taken on, how was that translation, you know, 
-hmm. So can you enlighten me on that? Is there any, is that just an urban legend of mine? Uh, maybe what I would understand is there was earlier school which was uh, TN psycho uh, psychotherapy. If you can mm -hmm. get a red book, there's a book on red book, which talks about um, the TA language uh, was introduced by Eric Byrne, but prior to that there was something else which was in psychiatry, which was uh, I don't remember the technical names, but they used for the analysis for a few people, a few experts. Mm -hmm. Uh, what Eric Byrne brought out this uh, awareness was that a common man can understand what's going on with that. Mm -hmm. It no longer became like uh, just a set of seven or 10 people or 50 people odd would know this concepts. Uh, it was uh, this particular theory is used even today in military and many other services mm -hmm. uh, areas where it helps you to predict your behavior mm -hmm. because it's a consistent patterns. So uh, what I what I learned for myself is that uh, when I'm going through the TA concepts with my clients and when they're engaged for a little longer, it helps me to predict much faster or even listening to certain words, body language, their self-concepts, mm -hmm. helps me to observe the data points to bring it to their awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier days, maybe uh, psychoanalysis, psycho trans psychotherapy or multiple other things are there in every country has their own specialization areas. Primarily, it goes into psychotherapy part of it, where it talks about you work in the child ego state a lot more. So if there are anger issues. A lot of study was talking about to work on the child ego state when you're doing psychotherapy. Uh, for me, I think in coaching and counseling, it helped me to understand that all three ego states are very helpful to work and observe. And rather than keep on judging and creating your own self-concept because of this, he could be behaving. Is to just check the data points and check the similarities that's coming out and then bring it to the client awareness. That really helps because I know what I'm going through rather than you making a meaning to it and writing it in your reports. So maybe that's something which I could make meaning to it. Was that your question? That and more. So thank okay. you. I think you over oversupplied, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any, anybody else? We have a couple of minutes. Okay, if not, I want to give a couple of announcements for people who want to keep joining these meetings. Once a month is always the last Wednesday of the month at the same time that today, wherever you are. And uh, we just changed hours here in the United States, so we're not going to change anything. So for people like Lynn and, and everybody really who are here from the United States, we're going to keep this time if you want to keep participating. And I want to make a call for proposals to participate and do presentations. Like Paris did today, I would love to hear, from, particularly from people from Asia, the colleagues from Korea, China, Singapore. Uh, I want to invite everybody to feel uh, free to present a proposal so you can do one of these sessions. So we want to create a community. So today we didn't have time to go to room, but sometimes we split in small rooms and people get to talk to each other and get to know each other. This is what we want to do. So people in Asia know each other who are supervising, who are supervisors or in training. So uh, with that in mind, I want to invite people here to keep coming. If you're not supervisor, you want to keep learning with us. If you're a supervisor and want to do a presentation, please send me a note so we can schedule you for the rest of the year. Uh, that's important. Uh, I would love to, to see the, the, the people uh, from the network to be the ones who do the presentations. Also, a couple of announcements. Tomorrow, there is a free class from ICF Los Angeles for people who are interested. This is about how to deal with the virus and the, and the stress and the tension. And uh, that can give you some tools if you're available for free. It's uh, four hours earlier, wherever you are, it's four hours earlier than what was today. So maybe we're in the middle of the night in India, not a good time, but maybe people in Korea and China is four hours earlier to us today. So maybe early in the morning, you can show up if you want to, you need to register. Also, uh, we organized a coaching supervision conference that was supposed to be in Mexico, but now it's a virtual conference and it's going to last from seven in the morning in LA to 7, 30, 8 p.m. at night. So that means that people from Asia will be able to participate in part of the program. So it will be great if you want to join us. We reduce the price, very reasonable. It's only $350 for three days of conference. 
and uh, we pro we're going to provide CCEUs, and everything is going to be recorded. So it's like 20, we have 23 sessions. Mike, Michelle here is one of the presenters. Lynn, maybe you can join us now that uh, things change. There is a possibility that uh, we're supposed to present in the conference. And um, Jose, who is here, is still here. He's also going to be doing, Jose, you're still here with us. Uh, you're going to be doing a supervision, uh, facilitate the supervision experience because we're going to have everybody at the conference to go to have an experience of group supervision. And uh, we have a few supervisors who are going to be facilitating and, and Jose is going to be one of them. So thank you for accepting that, that invitation to do that. And it's going to be very interactive, very dynamic. Let me share with you the link. So if you want to go to the link and learn more about it, uh, I do believe it's going to be a great um, learning opportunity. Um, so here is the link. I think one of the link, the first link in the chat room is for the ICFLA meeting, the second link is for the conference. Um, and it's coming in May 7 to 9. So this is uh, another interesting event for people to participate. So Paras, thank you very much. It was great having you here. Thank you for the information. Uh, are you okay sharing this in YouTube so it's easier for people to have access to that? Are you, available? Are you okay with that? Sorry, say it again. Is it okay if we share this in YouTube, if we put it in YouTube so we have access to everybody to learn from you? Yeah, it's on the YouTube. It's only then the YouTube. Okay, great. So, and for the people who participated, Lynn, if anybody have a problem with that, let me know. And if you don't feel that your participation, you want to be there, let me know. So thanks everybody. And I hope all are safe and dealing with all of the challenges that we are living all over the world. Um, look for support like these spaces where you can keep learning and growing and collaborating and supporting each other. So thank you everybody who are, who are here today and I hope that we can see you next, next month. And thank you, please, please thank don't you. be shy, send bye -bye. proposals to thank present, you. okay? Thanks for coming. A lot. Take care. Thank you. Thanks again.